Well, hello everybody and welcome back to episode 10. Apparently they're just keeping going this season. Anyway, episode 10 of the Permaculture Pirate. Today we are off in search of the elusive pine nut. Now, I was checking for resources along the backfield, which we're going to check out here in a second. And uh, I came across a grove of pine trees, maybe spruce trees, I'm not even entirely sure the, the nature of these trees. But anyway, you're going to see them in a minute there. Some of these things are just... They're adorable, they're so tiny. But I noticed a few of them have incredibly long needles. And when I was um, looking at a couple of permaculture sites at some places that I could order trees and bushes from, very interested in hazel burnt trees. I'd love feedback from anybody who watches that who uh, may or may not have those. That's actually part of what I was checking the field for too, was I was looking for uh, hazelnuts that I could dig up or clone or whatever. Anyway, so I found these, I believe them to be a long needled pine hopefully a Korean pine, but we're going to go and we're going to grab one today for the um, fabric planter that I've recently freed up from that basil, and we might grab a few little tiny, just regular pine trees, just to see if I can grow them down in the dungeon, because why not? A pine forest in the dungeon, that's just very JT Bear. So, let's get hiking. Alright, so heading into the backfield here, doo -doo -doo. see we've got these little pine trees here, possibly spruce. I'm going to leave these. These serve a purpose and they're uh, a little closer together than I would like them but it'll be years before that's a problem anyway so the backfield here this was canola last year and we're gonna hike down past all of that to these little trees so here's the beginning of this rather random stretch of evergreens I mean they're kind of growing in a straight line so you'd almost think it's an intentional planting but then you look at um, the kind of sporadic nature of these and uh, the obvious difference in age. Look at that little one in there. The little one buried in the grasses. And you think, well, maybe it was a squirrel stash. This is kind of my theory. It was forgotten about. Maybe somebody mowed over it, spread it along the way. Maybe one of the combines got it, or a spreader of some kind. But for the most part, these are all the exact same kind of tree. And I am going to try grabbing a couple of these. It's like I say, <laughs> a little pine forest in the basement. That's just really, really JT Bear. But walking along here with Mr. Puppy Dog one day, I happen to notice they are not all the same. Are they? This one here rather stands out from the rest. Rather a uh, greater gap in between those needles. Rather longer needles as well. Hmm. So, you know, I got interested, being me. Started running up and down. Like, look how close these things are together, right? One trees, another trees, another trees, another trees, another tree, three trees. This is anything but an intentional planting. So I don't think it's going to be a problem that I liberate a few of these. But here we have another of our beautiful long needled pines. And looking at the end, it almost looks like the beginning of cone development. So I looked around at the base. You know, could I find any? survivors, successful pine cones. Haven't found any yet, but so far my looking around online suggests the longer the needle on the pine, the larger the cone, and the larger the cone, the bigger the seed, therefore the pine nut that I'm going to get out of this. And after all, I am in search of pine nuts. So looking along, looking along, is there a tiny one? Because I mean, so far, I'm seeing tons of these just itty bitty baby ones, right? They're everywhere. I could probably take 50 of these things and no one would notice, which would be fantastic. But what am I gonna do with 50 of them, right? As it is, I'm busy cutting down a bunch. But here, we have a nice smaller tree, again with the longer pine needles. So it became Kind of a potential and here's a larger version of that tree still couldn't find any cones at the base i'm looking even now as i carry the camera but it's a very nice looking tree 
And I don't think I'm in a position to liberate something like this. But, so many of these things. Here's another one. Going quite nicely there. So these things are quite random. And as we get to the other side of the line, we're running out of numbers, but another one of those longer needled ones. And over here where I've dumped my tools, we have the smallest, loneliest, most Charlie Brown Christmas tree of the lot. So I'd love to hear other people's theories on how this uh, little random row of evergreens came to be. Until I hear something better, I am sticking with the lost squirrel cache and um, yeah, spread out by some form of machinery. So I'm gonna get to digging. We'll set the tripod up and hopefully get a couple of decent clips of that. You can see the gray sky behind me kind of lurking, kind of looming. Not the most pleasant day in West Man, but a good day to be playing in the dirt. So yeah, let's go set the tripod back up over by that Charlie Brown Christmas tree and uh, see if we can take it home. So I saw this as I started digging and I had to stop to share. I guess this tree's not quite as lonely as I thought. Look at these things. They're so cute. Tiny. Have you ever seen such a tiny little Christmas tree? But anyway, this is what we're going for. It almost looks like it might have another one right at the base. Kind of looks like the shorter needled variety though. So we will see what comes up when I get the shovel in there. Just got the pitchfork now to loosen it. Tandy doing these things on the edge of a farm field, nobody really cares. Ooh. This is some incredibly hard packed stuff. Need to run some hogs back here. All right, switch to the shovel. Alright, guess we'll take this home, shake it free, and see what our numbers look like. Okay, so here we are back at the house, freshly returned from the hunt, and uh, let's just dress the carcass as it were, see what we've got. Kind of looks like we might have three individual pines in all this. This soil is hard packed crap, my god. You know, when I first got into the whole permaculture thing, dirt was dirt, soil was soil, it all seemed about the same, didn't understand. But now that I've gotten more of an understanding of composting and long-term cropping, oh, you learn to see the difference in your soils right away. And you'll see that in the compost we're gonna put this in. But I'm gonna need to get a claw and uh, seriously work this hard pack stuff over. It's not gonna be the easy peel I was hoping for. This is good old Manitoba mud here. Post for you. Cheeky little squirrel. So looking at our final results here, I got the one that I went for. Nice little root system on it. Very excited to get that into some of the landscaping compost. It has done very well with everything we've put into it so far. Here we have a smaller example, kind of a standard needle one I think. I might just find a place to plant this outside. And then finally, We've got two of the cutest, littlest saplings you ever have seen. There's one right there. And then look at this guy. Isn't that just 
Is that in the camera? Isn't that just adorable? So I might actually put this in one of those little tiny party cups and put it on the windowsill. We may just have a windowsill pine in the, out of this deal. Um, yeah, this one... <sighs> you know what, I think I will try uh, growing this in the basement for a while. This might actually end up being our, our Christmas tree for a few years. It's got a good shape to it. And if I maintenance it, yeah, it'll be good. A couple years out of it before we get to plant it outside. And this one here, uh, I am definitely going to plant into that root pro pouch and take care of, hoping that I'm right. And the longer the needles, the larger the cone, the larger the cone, the larger and tastier the pine nut that I will find inside. We're just going to have to wait it out. And that's kind of how it goes with the permaculture piracy sometimes. Because when you're harvesting this stuff from out in the wilds, you never really know for sure until you know for sure. So I could be harvesting those little gold medallions here that are actually just gold foil over chocolate. Or I could have some beautiful, serious gold doubloons here that in the long run are going to be a nice, valuable addition to our permaculture forest. I am hoping that at least that one long needled one is going to be beneficial in the world of pine nuts. But as I said a minute ago, it's really, it's a matter of waiting. Time will tell. And uh, no matter what, it's always good to have more trees around, especially since I'm cutting those ones down there. And there are a lot of people that are concerned that, um, you know, more snow is going to be escaping onto the road. So I do want to do a lot of replanting in order to catch that. I just want to replant with trees that are productive in the edible sense and don't necessarily divide my property so it looks like two yards side by side. So we'll get into that in the future. Anyway, thank you for sticking around if you are still here. I have some baby trees to plant. So this is going to be it for me, but um, I will let you see putting the long needled pine away. Oh, I'm not sure what feels more appropriate here, a lullaby or that Charlie Brown Christmas theme. Do, 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 do. Oh, that is just deep enough. I'm going to want to transplant this in future years. All right, where's my little spade? The chicken choir in the background. All right. As I was saying, so far everything I've grown in this compost has produced some absolutely amazing roots. Unfortunately, um, a lot of tomato plants seem to be sprouting up from it as well. I guess that's just how it goes. Didn't quite get hot enough to cure things, which is why we're not really using it for the vegetables. But I think it's fine for the shrubberies and such. Hence, the landscaping pile. Oh, those chickens are right chuffed about something. I'm thinking somebody stole the spot on the compost pile. It's getting told off. Bit of a broken record, that though. All right, safely tucked into bed. Take care, everybody. The girl's got any idea what she's on about? Yeah, me neither. <laughs>